If there had to be a single ending, a single ending that does everything right, one that satisfies the viewer and creates ample room for a sequel, no film does a better job than The Matrix. I'm Henry Sharp and welcome to How to Write a Great Ending. Now in order to realise why The Matrix has such a powerful ending, we need to first realise what makes for a weak ending and in order to do that we need to know rule number one. The shorter the amount of time between the climax and the end, the better. An incredibly common killer for many stories is when the ending overstays its welcome, and it's such a common problem the issue has earned its own name, that being ending fatigue. Ending fatigue is essentially what happens when the story doesn't wrap up efficiently, and takes just too much time for the movie to reach the credits once the main plot has been resolved. If the amount of time between the climax and the credits is over 10 minutes, that film probably suffers from ending fatigue. Now there are countless films that suffer from this issue, but as a random example, let's look at Casino Royale. Now Casino Royale, for its merits, is a great film, and is arguably one of the best Bond films to have ever been made, however, for the last 40 minutes of runtime, the structure really becomes quite a bit of a mess. So the main plot is this, Bond has to beat the villain in a game of poker, and for the first act of the film it is clearly established that that is the end goal. So at the 1 hour and 40 minute mark, Bond wins the game, and then 14 minutes later the villain is killed. Then Bond is recovering from his injuries with a nice view with his romantic love interest by his side. At this point all of the plot threads have been resolved, and this would be a great time to end the movie, except then a whole new plot is created where his love interest betrays him and then he has to go and hunt her down. This quite simply is sloppy story structure, the viewer should have a correct sense as to when the movie is about to end, and when you build that expectation of an ending only to reveal that the film is far from over, it confuses the viewer and thusly hinders the viewing experience. In the end, the time between the resolution of the main plotline and the credits was 40 minutes, which is about 30 minutes longer than it needed to be. Now this all comes back to The Matrix, because in my opinion, this film has a perfect ending. But how exactly do the Wachowskis create this perfect ending? Well firstly, it follows rule number one really quite effectively. We have the climactic scene where Neo beats Smith, there is a short minute long epilogue with Neo on the phone, and then the credits roll. As a general rule, the moment your climax is over, you are on the clock where every second that ticks by, the viewer will gradually lose more and more interest, and as the age old saying goes, leave them wanting more. If you end your film quickly and on a powerful emotional note, with them fresh off the excitement of the climax, it will leave the viewer wanting more, which in turn will make them come out of the cinema with a more overall positive experience. I think many people greatly underestimate the importance of the final taste that is left in the viewer's mouth as they leave the theatre, because if you nail that ending, then they will look back on the whole experience with much more positive eyes and with much more negative ones if you don't. Now The Matrix does something else with its ending. The final note of the film is Neo talking to the machines about what he is about to do next, and how he plans to unplug everyone from The Matrix. This is again a good move by the Wachowskis, and ultimately it leads into rule 2 of writing a great ending. End with a final note of uncertainty. This is not an absolute must, however it is a technique that many filmmakers have been using since film began, and they keep doing it for a very simple reason. Because it works. Often the most memorable endings are the ones where the final note of the film is one that gives the viewer a question that they have to answer, whether it be Silence of the Lambs where the villainous Hannibal wanders into a crowd leaving our imaginations to wonder as to what that villain will do next, whether it be Inception as the final shot shows the protagonist finally reunited with his family, but the camera pans down to the still spinning totem and it leaves the question, did Cobb have a happily ever after, or was it really all just a dream. There are countless examples of films that end in this way, and the reason why is really very simple, because it is a very effective technique at making the ending a more memorable one. 
because that question leaves the viewer thinking about the film much longer after it is over than one that ties everything up in a neat little bow. And to realise what the third and final rule to writing a great ending is, let's compare The Matrix to Casino Royale, or more specifically, the timeline of how the main plots are resolved. So, for Casino Royale, there are three main plots. The poker game, defeating the villain, and the romantic subplot. 40 minutes before the credits, the poker game ends. 20 minutes before the credits, the villain dies. And in the last few minutes of the film, the romantic subplot is finally resolved. Now, there are a few things wrong with that order in itself. It would have been more effective if the romantic plot finished before the others. As a general rule, it's better to resolve the secondary plot before you resolve the primary one, in order to maintain the viewer's interest. However, there is another fundamental problem with this timeline. And in order to realise that, let's look at The Matrix. So in The Matrix there are four plots. Defeating the villain, Agent Smith, the sentinels that are hunting down the ship, the romantic subplot between Neo and Trinity, and the looming prophecy as to whether or not Neo truly is the one. Now, the reason why The Matrix has such a resonating climax is really very simple. When Casino Royale takes 40 minutes to resolve all of its plots, The Matrix resolves all of them in one. In one moment, every plotline is resolved, and what makes it even more poignant is the fact that all of the plot threads weave into one another, where Trinity's love makes him realise he is the one, and then because he realises he is the one, it gives him the power to beat the villain, and because he beats the villain, it allows them to defeat the Sentinels. As a result, instead of like Casino Royale, where the satisfaction is diluted over nearly an hour, The Matrix provides all of that satisfaction in one singular moment. This leads into rule three. The closer the plots are resolved to one another, the better. Catharsis really is the weapon of the climax. No good ending works without it, and no bad ending is worse with it. And I think a very interesting example of an ending that has no plot resolution, but is still a great ending, is The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. For those of you who have seen this film, how does it end? At the end of the first Lord of the Rings movie, the plot has no sense of progression, there is no great catharsis, the climactic scene is really just a fight between the heroes and a group of orcs. Really, in the last 20 minutes of this film, there is very little achieved in terms of plot, but still, it has a great ending. In fact, there is a very useful lesson here to be learned when it comes to writing the ending of a story that is in the series. Instead of having a plot-based resolution, this film goes for the opposite of a character-based resolution. Throughout the movie, we see Boromir, a man untrustworthy, blinded by greed and hatred, someone who starts the film a bad man but in the climax realises his flaws and makes a heroic last stand where he sacrifices his life a better man than he once was. And of course, there is that powerful moment where when speaking to Aragorn, the man at the start of the film he had no respect for, he says this. I would have followed you, my brother, my captain, my king. The film leaves us with the main plot unresolved, however, because it gives us this complete character arc where really the whole climax has nothing to do with the main plot but is rather centred around this one character as he dies a hero, this ending works because it gives us that satisfying resolution that really you just cannot create a good ending without. So if you want a powerful ending, Try to weave one of your character's arcs into the main plotline, as when you can resolve both simultaneously, your ending will be all the better for it. And before we go, I want to tell you guys that recently I've been using Squarespace for my personal website, and can proudly say that Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video, is one of the best places you can go to build your site. When you use Squarespace, they do all the hard work for you. There is no complex coding or confusing mechanics, only a series of simple and easy to use templates and a generally easy to understand interface. 
They have an award winning customer service team that's available 24 7 and if you use my link squarespace.com forward slash closer look you will receive a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. If you're an artist or a musician or a small business owner their service is convenient for constructing your site and there is no other service I would recommend more than Squarespace. Again if you use my link squarespace.com forward slash closer look you will get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So please be sure to click that link in the description while the offer still stands. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time on The Closer Look.